back to Kids Kingdom at Home. Today is our last lesson in the King of God's Kingdom series, and we are going to be turning our attention to Mark chapter 14. But before we get there, do you remember what we learned about last week? Do you remember how the religious leaders questioned Jesus' authority? They thought that they could get the better of him. But could they actually do that? Of course not. Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking, and more importantly, he knew that their hearts were turned away from him. Jesus reminded the religious leaders and us that God is patient with people and gives us opportunities to trust in Jesus as King. But one day, time will run out, and God will judge all those who have rejected his King. Today we are going to see how despite Jesus' warnings, the religious leaders, the ones who should have known God's word best, they continued with their plan to kill Jesus, while a very ordinary woman treated Jesus in the exact right way that he deserved. But before I get ahead of myself, it's time for our weekly interactivity. And today, I have a picture box with me. On this picture box, I've got three pictures that represent things in your life that you were able to give away and that have different value. So on the first side, I have lunch. On the second side, I have a picture that represents your most favorite toy. And on the third side, there's a picture of a, do you know what that is? That's a kidney. That's a very important human organ that we need in order to live. And most people are born with two kidneys. And so we are able to donate a kidney to another person if theirs don't work to help them live. Okay, so now I want you to imagine that coronavirus isn't an issue anymore and you're back at school as per usual playing on the playground with all of your friends when the class bully comes up to you and tells you that they've forgotten their lunch at home and asks if you would please share your lunch with them. Would you be willing to give your lunch to them or give, you, give them some of your lunch? What about if the same class bully came to visit you at home after school and asked to play with your most favorite toy? Would you give your toy to, to the class bully? What about if the class bully got really, really sick and they needed you to give them one of your kidneys in order to help them live? Would you be willing to do that? Okay, now, instead of the class bully, I want you to imagine that it's a good friend who needs some lunch. Would you be happy to give a good friend your lunch? What about if it was a good friend who wanted to play with your most favorite toy? Would you be happy to let them do that? What about a good friend who was very sick and needed you to give them one of your kidneys? Would you be happy to give them a precious kidney? Let's go back to the first picture. And this time I want you to imagine that it's a family member that you love very much. Mom or dad, brother or sister. What if they needed some of your lunch? Would you be willing to give it to them? What if a family member, someone you love very, very much, wanted to play with your most favorite toy? Would you be happy to give that to them? What if that family member was very, very sick and needed you to give them a kidney? Would you be happy to give them one of your kidneys? You see, boys and girls, it's not always easy for us to give things away. But if it's to someone who we love very, very much, then we are happy to give them things, even if it costs a whole lot. In today's true story from the Bible, we're going to hear about a woman who was happy to give Jesus something very precious and very expensive because she loved him so very much. Mark chapter 14 verse 1 to 11. It was now only two days before the Passover, the time when Jewish people especially remember how God saved them from death in Egypt by accepting a substitute a sacrificial lamb in their place. The leading priests and teachers of the law were trying to find a way to use some trick to arrest Jesus and kill him, instead of accepting him as the perfect final substitute and worshipping him as the promised king. They said, we must not do it during the feast, the people might cause a riot. At this time Jesus was in Bethany, he was at dinner at the house of Simon. While Jesus was there, a woman came to him. She had an alabaster jar filled with very expensive perfume. The woman opened the jar and poured the perfume on Jesus' head. Some of those who were there saw this and became angry. They complained to each other saying, Why waste that perfume? It was worth a full year's work. It could be sold and the money could be given to the poor. They spoke to the woman harshly. Jesus said, Don't bother the woman. 
Why are you troubling her? She did a beautiful thing for me. She did a good thing. You will always have the poor with you. You can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. This woman did the only thing she could do for me. She poured perfume on my body, and she did this before I died to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, the good news will be told to people in all the world, and in every place it is preached. What this woman has done will be told, and people will remember her. One of the twelve disciples, Judas Iscariot, went to talk to the leading priests. Judas offered to give Jesus to them. The leading priests were very pleased about this, and they promised to pay Judas money. So he waited for the best time to hand Jesus over to them. What the woman did made no sense to those around her. Many poor people could have benefited from the value of the perfume that she poured out on Jesus. But it made perfect sense to Jesus. He knew that he was about to die, and the woman's actions showed that she accepted Jesus as the king who had come to die in order to save people from their sin. Pouring perfume on Jesus represented getting his body ready for burial. What the woman did was not wasteful, but a beautiful display of her love for Jesus. You see, Jesus was not saying that looking after the poor is unimportant, but rather that because he was going to be leaving them very soon, loving him in the way that the woman did, that was the right thing to do. She worshipped him wholeheartedly and completely, even though it cost a lot. The Jewish leaders and Judas, one of Jesus' twelve disciples, however, they did not. Their actions were completely opposite to that of the woman. What a shock! These were people who should have fully understood who Jesus was and what he had come to do. But they refused to accept Jesus as the promised king that God had sent. They refused to accept him for what he had come to do. And so the leaders planned to put Jesus to death. And Judas joined in their plan by being willing to betray Jesus. But as always, God was in control, and so he used the rejection of the religious leaders and Judas' betrayal as part of his plan to take care of sin once and for all. The way the religious leaders, Judas and the woman, treated Jesus showed what they thought of Jesus. How we treat Jesus today shows what we think of Jesus. Some people don't think that he's very special at all. In fact, they are ashamed of him. And they hate him and want him out of their lives. Others love Jesus very much and recognize him as Lord and God. Nothing they do for him is too costly. Nothing is too much trouble. Everyone in the world fits into one of these two groups. That's true for me and that's true for you. So which group do you fit into? Which group are you a part of? Are you like Judas and the leaders or are you like the woman? Do your words and actions show that you have trusted in Jesus' death and resurrection to fix your problem of sin? Do you love him with your whole heart? Let's pray. Almighty God and Father, thank you that you sent Jesus into our world to be a king like no other. Thank you that his mission was not to overthrow earthly governments, but rather to suffer, die and rise again so that our sin can be forgiven so that we are able to be in a right relationship with you. Please help us to accept Jesus for who he truly is. Please help us day by day to worship him and to serve him wholeheartedly. May we never be ashamed to live for him. We ask all of these things in your precious name and for your sake. Amen. Right, time for me to say goodbye boys and girls. And time for you to take some time to chat with your grown-up about what you've heard today and about how you can put these things into practice as you go into the week ahead. I hope that you will be back next week to join me for another lesson from the Bible and for a brand new series. But in the meantime, please remember to stay safe, be kind to those around you, and to keep trusting in Jesus.